welcome to our service for Sunday the 28th of June at, here at Oxley Dara Uniting Church. It's great to have you with us this week. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, last week, hopefully, you were able to tune in to the, uh, the moderator's service for the anniversary of the Uniting Church, 43 years ago, the start of the Uniting Church in Australia. And, uh, and we continue, of course, in that great tradition. And remember those who have gone before us. Um, some notices, just to let you know that next week, our service will be live streamed. So that will be our Sunday service on July the 5th. Uh, we'll be coming to you live stream. So that means that on the, that morning, it'll be at 10 a.m., uh, and uh, you'll be able to log in and watch it live. And we hope there's some ways that we might even interact with you as we go through, particularly with our prayers. So please do log in. 10 a.m. the service will start. Come on a bit beforehand and, uh, and get in and uh, so that you're all ready to start. If, however, you can't get on here at 10 a.m., don't worry. You'll be able to watch the service. It'll still be on our YouTube channel. And you'll be able to watch it any time you want. And if you're a bit late, don't worry even then because you can come in. You can either start right at the beginning or you can just pick it up where we're getting involved. Uh, so please do make sure you can, uh, you can tune in next week. Unfortunately, because we're still in uh, this particular lockdown space, only people who will be part of the service can be in the church at that time. We continue to look to the future and, and uh, where, when we might be able to come back to uh, being together. And the church council is working hard on some uh, safety management plans and a work, assess work uh, risk uh, assessment for worshipping and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we know that uh, those, those plans have been approved and we can get going but it probably won't be until the earliest will be in August at this stage so hopefully that we'll be able to get back together again then. Please do keep an eye on our notice sheets and of course our website for any updates as we continue into the future. Our call to worship today comes to us from Psalm 13. So feel free to, to have a look at that as I'll reference it later on. How long, O oh God, how long must the suffering go on? It's sometimes seen that pain and suffering will last forever. At these times, Lord, we feel that you are absent. Oh, how we long for some sign of your presence. For pain is the enemy which threatens to overwhelm our trust in you. Without your presence, darkness and death fill our thoughts and crowd you out. Hear our cries, O God, as you have in the past. Dispel the dark horizons of our fear with the assurance of your presence. Help us know that we are never ever abandoned by you and that we can put our trust in your steadfast love. So we praise you, O God, for delivering us from darkness to light, from death to life. Remembering your great mercy, we lift our voices to you in songs of endless praise. So let's do that, that right now as we come and sing our first song today, Forever.
Thanks very much to the Gunders for bringing us that song today. Let's come to God with our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. We acknowledge, O oh God, that we are part of a suffering world, a world where human beings experience pain and isolation on a daily basis, a world at the moment that seems to continue to cry out, like the psalmist, how long, O oh God, how long will you... How long will you hide your face from all those who suffer right now throughout this world? Yet in saying this, we are forgetting that rather than hiding your face, you indeed revealed it in your Son, Jesus. Rather than abandoning us to all the destructive powers of this world, you chose to confront the power of evil by sharing our humanity and our suffering in and through the sacrificial love of Jesus. Through his love, Lives previously overwhelmed by the fear of death and darkness have been enlightened forever. God of grace and mercy, we pray as we worship you today that our lives will be transformed by the light and life of Christ and renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we praise and glorify you not only in words but in deeds of love and mercy performed in Christ's name and for his sake. Gracious and merciful God, over and over again, you challenge us to risk becoming the people you know we can become with your love and with Jesus' life within us. We know that the power of sin controls many lives in our communities today, causing people, young and old, to live lives filled with hopelessness and poverty, addiction and exploitation, lacking in self-esteem and any sense of worth. So when, in, when our inaction and lack of involvement with people's pain and problems leads to people still being controlled by the power of sin, and when we use aggression to get our own way, even when we know that this is destructive to others, merciful God, forgive us. When our conduct fails to measure up to the, to the, the demands of the gospel, and when we use our gifts to further our own ambitions, rather than building those around us up, merciful God, forgive us. When our lack of a strong Christian witness contributes to the ease with which many people are drawn into worshipping the gods of sport and wealth and fashion, and when we confess the lordship of Christ with our lips and then deny that lordship with our actions, Merciful God, forgive us. God of grace and mercy, help us to empty ourselves of habits which are destructive to ourselves and others so that we can be filled with the selfless life of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The good news is this. We are no longer under law but under God's grace. Paul writes that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom we are freed from sin and brought from death to life. In Christ's life then, I declare to you all, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We come now to our Bible readings and Steph Rankin is going to bring those to us today. Our first Bible reading today is from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 14. It is titled, Abraham Tested. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, 
Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar right there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham! Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram, and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Our second reading from the gospel comes from Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Jesus is speaking as he sends out the twelve. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Steph, for bringing us those readings today. You know, it is uh, a bit of a harsh world out there at the moment, isn't it? There are lots of things going on within our world that could lead us a bit like the psalmist to wonder, has God abandoned us? Let's face it, the world is, seems to be full of unrest, whether it's, of course, the all-encompassing coronavirus, or whether it's uh, those marches for Black Lives Matters, or... Aboriginal deaths in custody in our own country. Maybe it's the in seeming increase in domestic violence, which unfortunately has claimed yet another person's life. Maybe it's the fact that we are finding ourselves in a recession and money seems to be drying up, or the ever-increasing unemployment that is rocking us to the core. Maybe we should be asking, the, like the psalmist, where is God? Where is God in the midst of all this suffering? As the psalmist asks in that Psalm 13, which I use as our call to worship. But the psalmist ends on a high note and acknowledges that if we trust God's steadfast love, our salvation is assured. But what does that mean to us in this modern context? 
What does it mean to, for our lives to follow a God who seems to somehow uh, be distant? Where is God in the midst of it all? Our readings today give us some hints about how we are to continue to keep connected and on as faithful disciples of Jesus. And to continue as we connect to know that God is indeed still very much a part of who we are. I love that story of Abraham that uh, Steph read to us from, of course, the book of Genesis. Abraham had it pretty tough. If you go back to the beginning of his story, escaping from his homeland, wandering the deserts, being promised children and yet reaching a very old age with his wife, Sarah, and not having had any. Abraham continues to, be, to go out into the wilderness, nearly, to be hounded and to uh, have a whole heap of different things thrust upon him. It was not an easy journey for Abraham. So imagine Abraham's surprise in this reading, when finally he has his son Isaac, the promised child, the one who, in fact, Abraham relies on in terms of having descendants more numerous than the stars, as his God has promised. The agony of Abraham when God now calls him, his faithful servant, after all these trials and tribulations, to go up to the mountain and to sacrifice Isaac to him. His only child, the one who... Abraham was waiting so many years for. In the midst of what must have been a very anxious and an angst-ridden path, Abraham stays true to the course. He doesn't question God. He doesn't think that God had abandoned him. He stays faithful to the path. And of course, God provides. God calls him and tells him, because of his faithfulness, that God will provide. And they find, of course, the ram in the thicket. Abraham never gives up and never thinks for a moment that he's been abandoned by his God. In that very short passage that Steph read us from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 10, 40 to 42, only three verses We see Jesus pointing to a pathway of faithfulness, a pathway that those who wish to be disciples must follow. It's a pathway that we need to follow and can actually be broken down, what I think is, into three R's. No, they're not reading, writing, and arithmetic, although they were never three R's anyway. Um, They are these three R's. Remind, relationship, and response. So let's have a look at them. Remind. Jesus, in the beginning of this passage, reminds us that he is from God. And by welcoming him, that is Jesus, into our hearts and lives, we welcome God, our creator, the one who sustains us. We welcome him into our hearts anew. We call to do this daily, to renew our relationship with our God who wants to sustain us, to give us life, to, to journey with us on our journey through life. We are reminded of the God who continues to provide. In fact, he provides his son so that we might have life in all its fullness. The second R is relationship. God calls us into relationship through Christ, who comes to show us the way of the Father. But God also calls us into relationship with each other, that we might accept the other, and in doing so, receive the gift of righteousness. Whoever receives a righteous person becomes righteous, says Jesus in this passage. Our relationships with our God and how we translate that into our relationships with each other are a key part of being faithful disciples and staying the path. How we interact with the other is a key part in our discipleship journey. How we 
continue to have a relationship with our God is a key part in making sure that our discipleship stays firm. Our third R is response. The last R in our trilogy, if you like. Christ gives the simplest of commands in response in this passage. Who even gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones? Our discipleship journey is not complete without response. We need to get involved. This faith journey cannot be all theoretical. It needs practicalness in it. It needs us to do something, to be called into action. It needs us not just to change our hearts and minds. It needs us to change our actions and our behaviour. If we look at Abraham's story, we see these same three R's reflected in the story. The God who constantly reminds Abraham that he is his God. And God has never abandoned him. The God who wants to have a relationship with Abraham, who calls him into a deeper covenant with him, who is constantly there for him who is constantly part of his journey into the future. And the God who calls on Abraham to respond, to act, even if in this story it means the sacrifice of his only son. Abraham practices the three R's. He's reminded, he enters and continues to have relationship, and he responds responds in, in a way that uh, leaves us aghast, but shows us in the end a God who has not abandoned him. Just as our God has not abandoned us, we are reminded that God is still with us, still with us on our journey through life. God's Son sacrificed himself in that in that deepest of commitments, so that we would know how deeply God cares and loves each of us. We are called then to renew our relationship through our prayer life, through our commitment to the body of Christ, through our commitment to each other, through our ongoing relationship with our God. And of course, we're called to respond. Respond to the growing needs of a restless world. Respond to our neighbour in need. Respond to our first peoples in despair. Respond to the unemployed in their misery and anxiety. This is all part of the constant call to discipleship. This is the the constant reminder of a God who continues to come to us, continues to call us to be on this discipleship journey with him. Discipleship, the discipleship journey, just as Abraham experienced, it doesn't always mean a nice, easy, smooth ride. Abraham and many other of the, those people who are uh, those who have their stories recorded in the Bible, never had an easy, smooth ride. But what always is, the, of course, the point of those stories is that God never abandons them. And in fact, even when they don't want to st stay the course, and I think of people uh, who went and sat under, uh, under palm trees and, and people who tried to run, God found them. He did not abandon them. He stayed the course with them and he called them time and time again into a new relationship. So let us continue to practice those three hours, to be reminded of a God who continues to come to us and offer us his love, so keenly demonstrated through his son, our saviour Jesus. Reminded that we are called to be people of relationship, relating to our God and to each other and reminded that we need to respond as we continue our faith journey in tough times and in good.
our God goes with us. May the three R's sustain us on our faith journey this day and every day. Amen. We, let's sing our next song, which is a great song. Community of Christ. Come now to our offering and we offer ourselves anew in response, the third R, to what God has done for us as we're reminded of his constant love and grace and the relationship he calls us to. So let us come, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you that you sent your son so that we might have a relationship with you. You sent your son to remind us that you, our God, are still with us that you have never abandoned us nor forsaken us, and that you continue to call us to respond, to be your faithful people. Lord, help us in our response this day, our response through our direct debits, our response as we reach out to the people in need in our communities and in our world. Continue to journey with us, loving God, as we continue to seek to, re to serve and to continue to show your love to all whom we meet. Bless us and bless our gifts given through direct debiting and other means that we might continue to respond to the people of your community and beyond. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We come to our prayers for others this day. So let us come, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the world in which we live. But Lord, we are concerned. We're concerned by the continued uneasiness and unrest of the world around us. Lord, we see so many images flashed on our TV screens. Images of violence and unrest. Images of sickness and death. Images that continue to concern us about your world. Oh God, we pray for leadership in your world. We pray that those leaders that continue to make these hard decisions will continue to care for the people that those decisions will directly affect. Oh, bless all those world leaders. 
particularly in the tough decisions, that they might have within them your heart and love for your people, your compassion and care. Oh God, we continue to pray for the many protests that continue to go around the world, particularly around the Black Lives Matter movement. Lord, help us as we continue to strive to be part of solutions, to bring hope and healing as people of faith. Lord, help us to reach out, particularly within people within our own communities who may feel ostracised, who may have uh, experienced racism in, in first hand. Lord, help us to be people, people of equality, people who share your love with everyone whom we meet. Lord God, we continue to pray for our own country. We pray for leadership within this country, Lord, and for the ongoing unease that seems to uh, has crept in. We pray for people who find themselves at this time unemployed or underemployed. Lord, continue to be with them. Help them to know that you love them in the midst of their own anxiety and concern. Let them know that you continue to walk their path. We pray for those people who have been ostracised because of their race, their creed, their colour, their religion even. Or help us to create a society which is tolerant, which is open, which accepts all people. Or help us to be part of the solution to the ongoing issues of racism and, and terror within our own community. I mean, God, help us as we continue to reach out to people within our, with our own community, within the Oxley Darra community. Help us to be there for our neighbour, for the people on the margins and those people who are finding it very difficult at this time through isolation, through loneliness. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet and help us that we might respond even with the simple kindness of talking to the neighbour or reaching out to that person who, may, who seems lost and isolated. Loving God, we pray for our community. We pray for those people whom we know are suffering and who, who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for the family of Grace and of Rita who died in the last couple of weeks. Be with them in their despair. Comfort them and let them know that you hold them close. We continue to pray for all people who mourn at this time with the loss of loved ones still very keen in their hearts and minds. Lord, help us to reach out our arm, your arms of compassion as we reach out, as we respond to their needs. Lord, we pray for all those people who are ill or unwell. Lord, we ask that you would reach out your healing hands upon them at this time and may they know your love, your peace and your hope that surrounds them. Lord, we pray for all people who are coming to, uh, particularly our students, as they come to the end of semesters and terms and, Lord, as they enter into break, uh, a break time. Lord, we know that this, uh, this coming Sunday and the following week would have been the start of our day camp. And Lord, we, we do grieve the loss of that today and this coming week. And we pray for all those children who we might have been touching at this time, that they might continue to know your love for them. They might continue to know, even though we're not meeting in day camp, that our thoughts and prayers are with them. And loving God, we continue to pray for ourselves. Lord, help us to stay the true course Help us to be reminded that you go with us. Help us to respond. And help us to continue in relationship with you and with each other. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask them in the name of Christ. Amen. Folks, we come to our blessing and then uh, as we're to finish today, we're going to have our blessing song, which is a song that we sing particularly at our day camp and uh, day camp would have, yes, been on next week.
And uh, at the end of each day, our day campers all hold hands and uh, arms around each other and, uh, and sing the blessing song to each other as part of their journey with our God. So we'll sing that uh, as our final song in reminder, a remembrance nearly of the day camp that uh, unfortunately not this year, but hopefully will come, will come again with uh, great gusto in years to come. So may the blessing of our God who comes to remind us that he is still with us be upon you. May the blessing of his son who sacrifices all so that we can have relationships with our God and with each other be upon you. And may the blessing of the Holy Spirit, who continues to go before us, encouraging us and energising us to respond to God's word in our lives, continue to surround us this day. May you go knowing that wonderful blessing of God, Father, Son and Spirit upon you now and forevermore. Amen.